Both border sides from National League One, Berwick and Langham, have found themselves in the unfamiliar position this season of being in the relegation zone. And with Berwick in 11th place and Langham in 10th in the 12-team division, and with only seven games each to play, things were beginning to get critical. It was Langham who won the game between these two earlier in the season at Milton by 10 points to five, but this game was a real must-win for both. Langham were four points ahead of Berwick before this game at Scremiston and knew that a win would put daylight between their rivals. Berwick, on the other hand, could leapfrog Langham if he managed a bonus point win. So plenty to play for, and it was Langham who started off the best of the two, playing some inventive rugby in the muddy conditions. This move was typical of Langham's play for most of the game, and although they didn't manage to get a try despite their efforts, they did manage to win a penalty, which Colin Jardine slotted from the touchline to give Langham a well-deserved lead. And it wasn't long before Langham extended their lead with a fine move out on the left, Jimmy Little taking the scoring pass for the first try. And from an almost identical position, Jardin added another two points with another successful kick to give his team a ten-point cushion. Berwick may have been stunned, but they were putting pressure on Langham up front and started winning some ball. This was a good move, which deserved a try. Mark Laidlaw out to Jamie Walkup, bringing Colin Young in on the crash ball. Young's efforts created good second phase ball and put the back line in motion, with fullback Gareth Hill coming into the line and looping round to create the extra man. But he ran out of space and the Langham defence had no problem getting back to cover. But the referee had already blown for a penalty and it gave Jack Webster, the young Berwick teenager, a chance to get his side on the board and the former pupil of Longridge Towers kicked the points to make it 10-3. Another Colin Jardin penalty gave Langham their 10-point lead back and just before the break they could have been in for another try. Number 8 Stuart Graham picked up at the back of the scrum, passed to Keith Davidson and with a clever bit of jinking, taking advantage of generous Berwick defence, he put his colleagues in a tremendous attacking position in front of the Berwick posts. Alistair Cavers had a chance to continue the move, again helped by poor tackling. But an infringement gave Berwick a penalty and they cleared their lines. Into the second half and Langham should have gone further in front. This Berwick clearance kick was charged down and gave hooker Stephen Devlin a real chance to score his second try of the season in the league. Cammy Little was yellow carded after a series of penalties from both sides and while he was off, Berwick took control. They totally disrupted a Langham scrum in their own 22 and put the home side under the cosh. As the entire Berwick pack piled in, Langham couldn't cope with the pressure and it was only a matter of time before a try was scored and underneath this lot, Richard Hume scoring his second try of the season. The big comeback seemed to be on and with Webster converting, Berwick were within three points of their opponents and still 24 minutes to play. Jardin had missed three penalty attempts in the second half but with his fourth effort he gave Langham a 16-10 lead. Langham were still down to 14 men so Berwick were keen to take advantage and managed to get themselves into scoring positions. But when a deliberate knock-on gave Berwick a penalty they turned down the three points and opted for a scrum. Richard Hume eyed up his second try of the match and forced his way to the line, but he was robbed of the ball and Neil Cubbin counter-attacked to take the play upfield. Although Berwick got back to defend this move, Langham were able to use field position to create something. And it was Keith Davidson who broke away, or at least I think it was Davidson under all that mud, who got the ball away to Jamie Little, who went over for his second try of the game. The conversion was missed, but time was running out as the going got heavier and it was even getting difficult to identify the two sides. Berwick's miserable day ended with a knock-on and it spelt disaster for them and joy for Langham. And the final score, 
It was straight to the dressing room for the home team who had a lot to talk about, but unfortunately not to us. And you can understand why as the pressure mounts for this famous club who have a real fight on their hands to avoid relegation down to National League 2. For Langham though, it's a big, big win. Yeah, it's a massive win. Um, obviously, with this winter we've had so far this season, uh, the last six weeks have been a bit of a nightmare. Um, obviously, the pitches have been under snow quite a bit. and We've just been training in the hall. We managed to get a game against Jed on Tuesday night, which helped us, I think, in the build-up to this bit. In the, the, the layout of the season, it's a massive win for us to come up with a Berwick and, and come away with a win. So you're now eight points ahead of Berwick and, uh, well, a couple more wins and you'll probably feel that uh, the job's almost done. Almost done, yeah. Um, we've got quite a few home games coming up. We've only got two more away games after today, so um, we're quite confident uh, turning over a few teams at Milton. But um, we've got another big away game across at Arnon, who are obviously um, below us as well. So if we could get a win there, it'll certainly help us on the way to the end of the season. Borders Rugby TV in association with Scrum Magazine, the driving force behind grassroots rugby. Subscribe for free at scrummagazine.com.